Hi, I am Ajit Virkud, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology from Mumbai. Hello citizens of the internet. Today I am going to discuss intrauterine growth restriction. Intrauterine growth restriction, also known as fetal growth restriction, is the second most important cause after prematurity of low birth weight infants. I am going to discuss the topic in two parts. In the first part, I will talk about the basics of the disease and in the second part, I will discuss the diagnosis and management. Before I start the topic, I am going to discuss a few basics that are essential to understand the topic. First, I will explain what is a percentile. Here is a distribution curve for estimated fetal weight of normal babies for particular gestational age such as 28 weeks. From this, the mean and standard deviation are calculated. Two standard deviations less than the mean is called the 10th percentile, whereas two standard deviations greater than the mean is called as the 90th percentile. To understand fetal growth, one needs to know what is hyperplasia and hypertrophy. Hyperplasia is an increase in the number of cells in an organ or tissue. It occurs as a result of increase in the mitotic rate of its cells. The enlargement of an organ or tissue from the increase in size of its existing cells is called hypertrophy. When there is increase in volume of tissue or organ as a result of both increase in the number of cells and the size of the cells, it is called hyperplasia plus hypertrophy. What is Ponderal Index? Ponderal Index PI is a widely used measurement of the infant's relative thinness or fatness independent of race, gender and gestational age. It is given by the formula PI is equal to weight in grams into 100 divided by cube of the length of the fetus. Normal PI values range between 2.32 and 2.85. The PI is normal in symmetric IUGR, low in asymmetric IUGR, and high in macrosomic babies. The term intrauterine growth restriction is frequently used interchangeably but incorrectly with small for gestational age. IUGR is the pathologic counterpart of small for gestational age. In other words, IUGR is a term used by obstetricians to describe a pattern of growth over time. Small for gestational age is a term used by pediatricians to describe a single point on a growth curve. The term SGA includes two types, constitutionally small babies and IUGR babies. Approximately 70% of fetuses with a birth weight below 10th percentile for gestational age are constitutionally small. In the remaining 30%, the cause of IUGR is pathologic. Of these, 20% are asymmetrical and 10% are symmetrical. How do you define IUGR? When the fetus fails to reach its growth potential, it is referred to as fetal growth restriction or intrauterine growth restriction. In practice, however, specific ultrasonographic criteria are used to diagnose IUGR fetus. These are estimated birth weight below the 10th percentile for that accurately dated gestational age or estimated birth weight less than two standard deviations from the mean or ponderal index below the 10th percentile. This definition has one fallacy. It not only includes true IUGR fetuses but also constitutionally small fetuses. Birth weight percentiles do not distinguish between the small fetus who is normally growth given his genetic potential and the fetus who is growth retarded owing to an intrinsic or extrinsic disease process. Hence, other ultrasonography criteria are necessary to differentiate the two types. It can be concluded that a fetus is constitutionally small only after a pathologic process has been excluded, 
which requires examination of the newborn. Therefore, identification of a constitutionally small infant is usually made in retrospect after the infant is born. Constitutionally small babies are well proportioned and developmentally normal. Growth restricted babies, however, are often malnourished or dysmorphic. Overall, incidence of IUGR is 2 to 10% in Western countries. It is 2 to 3 times higher in developing countries like India. In order to know the types of IUGR, one needs to understand how fetal growth occurs, and I am going to dwell on it for a bit. Fetal growth occurs in three phases. In the first phase, between 4 to 20 weeks, there is only hyperplasia because of rapid mitosis, there is increase in DNA content. In the second phase, between 20 to 28 weeks, there is hyperplasia as well as hypertrophy of cells. Mitosis starts decreasing, whereas cell size starts increasing. In the last phase, from 28 weeks to term, there is only hypertrophy of cells. Thus, if insult occurs to the fetus in the early part of fetal life, that is first 16 weeks, it will affect the growth of all organs of the body resulting in symmetrical intrauterine growth restriction. If the insult occurs in the later part of pregnancy, during the hypertrophy phase of fetal growth, there is redistribution of blood to vital organs like heart and brain, whereas blood to other organs like liver and splanctic circulation is decreased, leading to asymmetrical intrauterine growth restriction. This graph shows normal rate of fetal growth in terms of fetal weight gain in grams per day. By the fifth week, fetal gains about 5 grams per day, after which the weight gain gradually increases to a peak of 35 grams per day by the 35th week. Thereafter, it declines to 15 grams per day by 40 weeks. Fetal growth depends on two components. Genetic potential, which is derived from both parents, mediated through insulin-like growth factor, and substrate supply. Fetuses require glucose, oxygen, and amino acids for growth. These substrates are derived from the placenta and depend on uterine and placental vascularity. Currently accepted classification as per birth weight percentiles is as follows. Less than third percentile, very small for gestational age babies. Less than 10th percentile, small for gestational age. 10th to the 90th percentile, appropriate for gestational age and greater than 98th percentile, large for gestational age babies. Pathological intrauterine growth restriction is of following types. Type 1, also known as symmetrical or intrinsic IUGR. The characteristics features of this are growth inhibition from early pregnancy that is 4 to 20 weeks, affects hyperplastic phase of fetal growth, causes are congenital malformations and intrauterine infections. Parameters like weight, head circumference, abdominal circumference and femur length are below 10 percentile for gestational age. Ponderal index is normal. Causative factor is usually uncorrectable. Type 2 or asymmetrical or extrinsic intrauterine growth restriction. The characteristic features are occurs later usually after 28 weeks of gestational age, affects hypertrophic phase of fetal growth, causes are maternal, fetal or placental factors, there is a brain sparing effect which I will talk about later on. Parameters like head circumference and femur length are normal. Abdominal circumference is characteristically decreased. Ponderal index is low and causes can be treated in most cases. Combination of symmetrical and asymmetrical IUGR is called as type 3 or intermediate IUGR. 
the features are affects both hyperplasia and hypertrophy associated with severe chronic hypertension lupus nephritis and vascular diseases in early second trimester it has the worst prognosis some describe iugr as early onset where the onset is before 32 weeks and late onset iugr where the onset is after 32 weeks this classification has a limited clinical potential because both patterns overlap in individual cases hence some investigators prefer the following etiologic classification intrinsic iugr is one where fetal growth restriction is caused by intrauterine infection or chromosomal abnormalities extrinsic iugr is one where growth failure is caused by placental or maternal abnormalities combined iugr in these patients there are both extrinsic and intrinsic factors acting in conjugation to bring about growth failure and idiopathic iugr where the cause of fetal growth failure is unknown the brain sparing effect observed in asymmetric iugr refers to the fetal adaptive response to chronic hypoxia in which the fetus preferentially redistributes its blood flow to the brain myocardium and adrenal glands low middle cerebral artery pulsatility on doppler ultrasound may provide direct evidence of brain sparing effect now let us see what are the causes of intrauterine growth restriction for convenience the causes of iugr are divided into maternal fetal placental and idiopathic maternal causes are low socioeconomic status maternal malnutrition drugs like alcohol substance abuse warfarin phenytoin smoking uteroplacental insufficiency resulting from preeclampsia and chronic hypertension which is the most important cause and pre gestational diabetes mellitus and thrombophilias like aplas syndrome fetal causes of iugr are chromosomal and genetic defects such as trisomy 18 13 and 21 turner syndrome congenital infections like torch infections malaria tuberculosis parvovirus structural anomalies like congenital heart disease anencephaly renal agenesis inborn errors of metabolism and multiple pregnancy placental causes are abnormal placentation conditions like placenta previa abruptio placentae placental infarcts single umbilical artery placental abnormalities like circumvallate placenta marginal or velamentous insertion of cord and placental tumors like chorioangioma of placenta while i am on placental causes of iugr a small question for you what is a small placenta answer fetal to placental weight ratio greater than 10 is called as small placenta what are the complications of iugr these fetuses are associated with a substantial increase in perinatal morbidity about 3 times and perinatal mortality about 8 times antepartum risk of iugr are oligohydramnios chronic fetal distress and intrauterine fetal demise intrapartum growth restricted babies are more prone to intranatal complications like birth asphyxia and meconium aspiration syndrome and after birth highline membrane disease hypothermia hypoglycemia acidosis hyperbilirubinemia and necrotizing colitis long term sequelae of iugr are intrauterine growth restricted babies are more prone to hypertension cardiovascular disease and carbohydrate intolerance in adult life 
this is referred to as fetal origins of adults disease also known as barker's hypothesis this is the end of part 1 in part 2 i will talk about the diagnosis and management of iugr for further reading on this topic and other topics in obstetrics and gynecology refer to following books written by me practical obstetrics and gynecology modern obstetrics modern gynecology clinical cases in obstetrics questions and answers clinical cases in gynecology questions and answers and pelvic reconstructive surgery if you have found this video useful and informative please subscribe to my youtube channel by clicking here